What's up guys, this is Timotheus. Today I'll talk about Nehalenia. She was a local goddess that was worshipped in Roman times in the area where the river Schelde flows into the North Sea, in what is now the Dutch province of Zeeland. There's evidence of temples dedicated to Nehalenia at at least two locations in this area, one in Dombrug and one in Kolijnsplaat. Since the rediscovery of these sacred sites, the one in Domburg was rediscovered as early as the 17th century, hundreds of altars and pieces of altars have been dredged up from the bay, alongside a considerable number of other finds, including roof tiles and bowls. The temples were probably in use during the 2nd and 3rd century. The altars are constructed in a Roman fashion, a relief of the goddess typically in a shell-headed niche, with a formulaic Latin inscription. It seems likely that the worship of Nealinia predates the Roman era, though. She probably was a Germanic or Gaulish goddess that was later Romanized. Altar reliefs of Nealinia are remarkably similar. She is usually shown seated, with a fruit basket on her lap, next to her on the floor, or both, and on the other side, there's usually a dog sitting right next to her. With the evidence we have today, it's impossible to determine the meaning of the fruit and the dog with absolute certainty, but in Greco-Roman religion, both have been associated with the underworld and therefore fertility. Or perhaps Nealinia's canine friend should be seen in the light of a now unknown ritual role dogs had in Germanic or Gaulish religion. About 200 kilometers from the temples, that's about 125 miles, in the Belgian city of Tongere. Dog skulls have been found, ritually buried alongside mysterious earthenware plates with edges that were deliberately chipped off. It's unclear what the purpose of this ritual was. If we knew why the remains of dogs were buried in this way, perhaps it could help us interpret Nehalinia's altars. Another reoccurring attribute in reliefs of Nehalinia is her distinct shoulder cape, which gives her a particularly local appearance. Occasionally, she also carries a staff. On top of her altars, there usually is no circular depression for burning incense as can be commonly seen on Roman altars. Instead, many Nehalinia altars appear permanently laden with offerings of apples and pears. It seems reasonable to assume that actual pears and apples were also put on top of her altars. The Latin inscriptions on the altars tell us something about the people who dedicated them. Most supplicants were ship owners or merchants who wanted to thank her for granting a safe passage across the sea to Britannia and back. This altar, for example, reads to the goddess Nehalinia. Marcus Exgingius Agricola, citizen of Trier, and salt merchant in Cologne, fulfills his vow willingly and deservedly. So, this gives us a pretty good picture of the kind of people that would have visited the temples to worship Nehalinia. On this map, you can see where the temples were located, and based on the inscriptions, we can say that most supplicants were from Germania Inferior, Germania Superior, Gallia Belgica, or Gallia Lugdunensis. The fact that so many people from all over the area passed by Nealinia's temples before or after crossing the sea to Britannia indicates that there must have been an important harbor there. Unfortunately, the coastline has changed quite a bit since Roman times, so a lot of artifacts were undoubtedly swallowed by the sea. Looking for them is apparently very difficult, as diving conditions in the bay are unpredictable and just not very good in general. But in spite of this, a few passionate divers keep on looking for more evidence. Who knows what mysterious treasures are still waiting for them on the bottom of Nehalinia's waters. 
In 2004, a Gallo-Roman-style temple was built at Colansplat to give an idea of what the temple might have looked like. As there is no evidence for the exact appearance of the temple, it's no more than an educated guess. But at least Nealinia is no longer homeless. That was it for this video guys. Don't forget to hit the like button and if you'd like to see more videos on pagan deities and rituals, please subscribe to my channel and check out my playlists. For references, you can click on the link to my blog post in the description. This was Timoteus. Thanks for watching.